Hey guys, it's Monday, December 26th, and this is Newswave. So before we start the news, I just wanted to say, hope you guys had a great Christmas Sunday. It was kind of nice, obviously, because it falls on a Sunday. Hopefully a lot of you guys are off today. I know a lot of government places kind of observe the Monday after if it's on Sunday. So hopefully you guys have some time today to kind of relax and maybe play some games or get some stuff done around the house. But uh, let's get right into the news now. So the first bit of news today comes from that awesome website, Kickstarter, where back in January 2014, there was a game that was successfully launched through Kickstarter. This game is called Unsung Story. It was a game that was kind of kicked off with a backing of $660,000 through Kickstarter. So it was uh, well and above more than I assumed they would have expected since they weren't asking for that much. But of course, the, the game looked good enough to where people said, hey, we'll try it out. It was a company that actually had a little bit of merit to it as well. It wasn't just like a run-of-the-mill three, you know, three-person team that wanted to build a huge game. This was this is a a company that has developed games for like mobile platforms and everything. And this company is called Playdeck. Now, they had an interesting plan to develop this game and they even wanted to bring in lead designer for Final Fantasy Tactics, Yasumi Matsuno. And I assume most of the money was going to be used to pay him to design, the, he was going to design the story and uh, basically the overall game's feel and uh, design. But since the, the actual project was funded, nothing has happened. There's been a lot of like, uh, a lot of excuses, a lot of delays, a lot of things kind of stopping it from coming to market or any kind of update showing gameplay or anything like that. Well, they basically came out the other day. Uh, this was on Friday at 10 o'clock at night, which I assume this was put out to try to try to maybe get by, by some people. I, I don't think they were going to get by the big, you know, the big backers for this game. They were going to find it either way. Usually when people see the news, you don't release it at 10 o'clock Eastern time, Friday night, especially Christmas weekend, obviously. This to them was probably a perfect time to where they could release this bit of news, uh, say that they updated people, and then 80% of the majority miss it. But no, they found it. They plastered it all over the internet, and it makes Playdeck look really bad right now. And basically, in the update that they put out, it, bas it says that they're getting proper funding, which is odd, and basically they're working on a playable build as of now. But what's weird is they received $660,000 from their fans, people who had enough confidence in them to give them, obviously, money to build this game. There was a lot of things that were promised to them, including a single-player experience, which they uh, seem to have broken because they're going to introduce PvP combat and online multiplayer stuff to it, where these people put their money in, originally thinking it was going to be a single-player, uh, you know, vast RPG-type experience, and it's not the game that they seem to be developing now. And this is the big problem with Kickstarter. And we went over this a little bit before. There's no actual, uh, there's nothing that says these people have to do this stuff. You give them your money hoping that it's going to happen, you know, but basically by good faith. Uh, $660,000 is a lot of money, though. It's not like people gave, like, you know, people gave him $15,000 where everyone threw in 10 or 20 bucks. There's some people who put in $1,000 into this thing. So what what's happening now is some of the people, the backers in particular, are asking for refunds, which play play deck has no they don't have to give them this money back so of course these fans are basically taking matters in their own hands so one backer in particular is actually talking about a class action lawsuit where all the backers can get together and basically hire a lawyer and have them all go after play deck for the money that they put into it uh it sounds to me like play deck maybe did not realize how expensive this game was going to be to build put a number out there, although $660,000 for an indie game, I think is enough to build this thing. Now, granted, they'd have to obviously hire some, some probably some high-class designers and everything for this game, including, obviously, the designer of Final Fantasy Tactics. Maybe they were shooting a little too high for that, for the money they were going to be putting into it, and maybe the scheme and, and the overall vastness of the game they were trying to build. But they should have been honest up front that, hey, we need X amount of dollars to build this thing, you guys gave us $660,000, which is above what we thought it was going to cost. And there's also, all right, so there's also some some worry because they're releasing other games. It's not like they're not they're in a company that's not releasing games. They're releasing several other games right now, mostly mobile games. The fear, though, is that they are using that money from Kickstarter to then build these other games to make money to then fill in the holes of Unsung Story, which is not good. Ethically, that's very bad, but... We'll keep an eye on this thing. I have a lot of worry here that we'll never see this game. That's why people are getting mad. It's been three years and no screenshots, no gameplay of even alpha, nothing. So if you're a backer for that, I don't blame you for being mad. You should really look into contacting the person trying to do this, uh, 
this large scale class action lawsuit. And last week, Nintendo actually renewed their their basically their copyright filing for Eternal Darkness. Now, if you've never played this game, think Silent Hill, just a little little crazier. I know it sounds hard to believe, but they did some really cool stuff to mess with you yourself as the gamer. Things like uh, there was an insanity meter that would kind of uh, go up and down depending on how you were doing, the character stress level, and it would do just some crazy stuff to you. Even going as far as to tell you that like your save data has been deleted, you know, your controller's unplugged, just some really weird stuff. It actually would remind me of Metal Gear Solid 2 when you're playing towards the end and they tell you to turn the PS2 off. It's like that. And now Nintendo has basically filed to keep this patent, well, their their copyright for Eternal Darkness, for a while they were extending it, extending it, and you could do that so many times, but then you eventually have to work to renew this thing. And the fact that they're not going to let this go tells me that there must be some planned future for this series, whether it be, my main thought is that they're going to renew it and then put possibly the GameCube version on the system. And that would actually be really cool to have that as a mobile game on the Switch. Or maybe they're going to work to build more of a mature audience as well to the Switch, because obviously you want to attract the older crowd as well as the younger crowd. Eternal Darkness would be really neat to have like that horror genre that you can put on the system. It worked really well with the GameCube with Resident Evil 4. Um, and I think it would work really well on the Switch because it has that cult following that would probably go out and buy the Switch just to play it. And keeping with the Switch news, Michael Pachter has come out and said that the Switch, from what he's heard, the Switch is easy to develop for from all the developers apparently that he knows, I don't know if he actually does, but the people he's heard from, out of the big three, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, PS4, Xbox One, obviously Switch, the Switch is the easiest one to develop for. And this is interesting. I, I had to kind of think about what he's talking about. It's easier to develop for. And I realized that out of the three, the Switch will have technically the most up-to-date hardware, even if it might be weaker, because it's going to use a newer architecture than what technically AMD ATI put in the Xbox One, the PS4. It's it's a pa or it's either Pascal or Maxwell. Uh, a lot of signs are pointing to Maxwell, but even that is newer than what's in the PS4, the Xbox One, and then of course it also has support for Vulkan, OpenGL, a lot of options essentially for the system. That's all I can imagine. I don't think he's saying it's powerful, so it's easy to develop for. I think he's saying there's more tools for the developers, that's why it's easier to develop for. Again though, keep in mind, it is Michael Pachter, he's, he's, you know, he's pretty well versed in everything, he knows a lot, but he has been wrong a lot in the past, so don't take what he's saying as the absolute truth, take it as like, oh that's cool maybe he's right. And this right here might be my favorite news of the day. Uh, it's actually been kind of rumored and talked about by someone who's known to leak these things well in advance uh, and actually be right a lot because they, uh, they're they basically saying that they are part of the company or the company they're working for and they had an NDA that they're breaking. And they are basically saying Rocksteady, the people who have done all the Arkham series, is actually working on a Superman game. And the person who's basically leaking this stuff, his name's The Leakkin which that's fine, that's a pretty funny name actually, but they, they basically they're going on to say that, I'll show you here, they're violating their NDA as a way to stick it to uh, Warner Bros. Montreal, that's fine, and the way that they've treated the company. And uh, as, uh, Down from there, you can see they say, as for what Rocksteady is working on, they started working on a Superman game, but of course they've run into many issues. I don't blame them. Superman has got to be one of the hardest games to, like, characters make a game around because he's so powerful. I mean, he really has the ability to destroy most enemies that other superheroes struggle with. Like, obviously, Superman is going to roll in and just wipe the Joker without too much issue, whereas Batman would have a harder time with him. Uh, and it's 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 got to be hard to build a game around a character who is just all-powerful. Of course, he does have weaknesses and so forth, but if you just play as him... Uh, you're going to realize you are just basically a god in Metropolis. So th they said that basically Superman had to be depowered for mo part of the game, and even at maximum strength, they had to make him much weaker than he normally is. But what was really cool was that if you scroll down from there, he actually talks about the coolest part being basically skins that you get, and that determines your move set and his weaknesses, almost like uh, costumes, if you will, uh, uh, move sets and and customization. And it's really cool because apparently you can collect several of them, including like a Cyborg Superman, Zod, and even Nuclear <laughs> Nuclear Man from the Superman 4 film that was pretty bad. Now, of course, this is all rumor, but again, the leak in has been known to uh, put out a lot of leaks, things like Arkham, uh, Arkham Knight, stuff like that. He's put out leaks, uh, and 
it this could be good. I, I do see them sticking with Warner Bros. and the DC Universe. I think Superman has needed a good game for a while. I think he's needed a darker game. Rocksteady was awesome with the Arkham games. I, I will forever say that Arkham Asylum was one of my favorite Batman games. It came at a great time. It came with... A, a fresh perspective of him in the video game world, and I think they could do the same thing with Superman, so keep an eye out. They said they wanted to show it at the Video Game Awards show, but it kind of fell apart. I could see E3, probably, if, if this is all true, that he would show up. Again, it's rumor, but it, 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 it makes sense. I mean, Superman needs this game, so I, I would keep an eye out for it. Maybe we'll see it in the news pop up. If it does, I'll let you guys know. Now, and if any of you guys saw the rumor that the Wii U was being recalled from retailers, uh, Best Buy has basically come out and said, no, that's not the case. Uh, we just have limited supply shortage, like we have supply shortages right now. Uh, this was like a kind of a rumor that started up a couple weeks ago that uh, basically wholesalers were taking the Wii U's back from Best Buy. I can tell you now, um, based on some of my experience with wholesalers, they don't take anything back. They don't. Uh, even if you get a ton of 360 games now of like NBA 2K17, for example, you can't send it back to your retailer or your wholesaler. They just, they don't want games back. They don't make a lot on them. They don't want them returned. It's as simple as that. And even if you're working with a big company like Best Buy or something, it won't matter. They like they can't say the reason these Black Friday sales were going on for things like Call of Duty and stuff. They just have too many of them. They need to get rid of Call of Duty. Uh, I can tell you now, everyone overordered on it, including some of the companies, people I was working with. Everybody overordered on Call of Duty. It just was not selling well. So to even think that the Wii U is getting recalled is is just dumb. Uh, people believed it. They spread it all over the internet. Of course, it's easy to attack Nintendo when stuff like that happens without fact checking, but the Wii U is not being recalled. It was just supply shortages, much like with the 3DS. Also some awesome, awesome screenshots for Gran Turismo Sport came out. Check these things out. These screenshots, I, I first saw them and I said, man, that looks like a real car. And of course I see this Gran Turismo. What they're doing is they're using things like HDR lighting, high dynamic range lighting, to make the car look way more photorealistic than I've ever seen before. Even in games like Forza, which don't get me wrong, Forza is a great looking game, but these stills, man, these stills look good. I really want to see what this game looks like in motion, possibly in 4K or on the Pro, because based on these screenshots, it, it looks so close. This is probably the most cl like close I've seen to photorealism in a game like with cars than ever before. And it makes me get really excited for what Forza can do if you put it on the Scorpio in 4K with HDR, more than likely at 60 frames, and that game would probably look and play amazing. But for now, Gran Turismo Sport is the closest thing we have to that because it's going to run in 4K, of course, on the Pro. It's going to use high dynamic range coloring and everything. So it looks amazing. I'm, I'm really excited to see this game in motion. Hopefully we see it soon. I just want to see what it looks like in 4K with that HDR lighting. And yes, some of you guys told me uh, this the other day. I just wanted to make sure everything was confirmed. Uh, Dragon Quest XI for the Switch is basically confirmed. It's on Nintendo of Japan's website at the bottom where they're talking about basically Dragon Quest XI. You will see that uh, basically the game is also in the works for the Switch. The thing they don't specify, though, they don't specify if it's the PS4 version or if it's the 3DS version. Now, the, the basically the public opinion is saying that it is the PS4 version. I would like to believe that it's the PS4 version, but... Until we see some kind of clarification from them, it may be a much better looking 3DS version, or it might be a slightly downscaled version of the PS4 in terms of, you know, visuals, because if it goes to the Pro and they put a 4K patch with it, of course, it's not going to probably play on 4K on the Switch, but we're either going to get a slightly downgraded version, I say slightly, slightly downgraded version from the PS4, or we'll get a much more upgraded version from the 3DS. It's hard to say if Nintendo has the rights for the 3DS version in terms of gameplay and everything, and Sony has the rights for the uh, the one that you see for the PS4, we'll probably know more going forward in the next couple months, because um, it is due to release in 2017. You know what will be really, really awesome is if they show up at the Switch event, or as mo most of us are calling it now, Switchmas, in uh, 16 days, I think now, and they show up and that game is there, because that would really turn some heads, especially if they show up with what we believe to be the PS4 version, um, that would really bring that that JRPG third-party support over because once you get a game like that on there and it works and it sells, it's just going to bring other developers over who want to make those type of games. I could easily see with how the 3DS went with the Switch getting that nice JRPG lineup that'll really bring the niche and hardcore gamers over. But we will see. I think that is the perfect place to show Dragon Quest XI. And if they show it, you can always be like, well, 
John said it was going to be there. But we'll see. We'll see. And guys, that's going to do it for News Wave today. I hope you had a lot of fun, like I said, over Christmas weekend. Hope you got some cool new gifts or toys, or hopefully you had a lot of fun giving them out. If you're a parent, I'm sure you had a lot of fun, hopefully, giving gifts away. Or maybe you're not because your wallet got hit a little bit. But, hey, it's the, it's the holiday season. That's what you do. But... Uh, I will see you guys uh, tomorrow, obviously, for News Wave. I'm trying to put uh, this Tech Wave video out soon where we actually go through Super Nintendo carts and just look at how awesome, because there are some really, really cool features to Super Nintendo cartridges that most of us don't know uh, because a lot of them are a little different, and it was really cool technology at the time because they really built the carts with what they needed, and the Super Nintendo kind of just adapted to it. So keep an eye out for that, too. Hopefully that will be out in the next day or two, and you guys can check that out as well. But with that, guys, I will see you tomorrow.